All right, Pixel viewers, now we know how to load XML into Flash, but what are you gonna do with it after it's there? That's what this tutorial is for. I'm gonna show you how to put the image in a movie clip and add some cool transitional effects. Again, let's not waste any time. All right guys, let's begin with setting up our viewing area. Click on the stage and go over the properties panel and edit the stage size to 350 wide by 450 high. Make a new layer and call it Art Area. Grab the rectangle tool, make sure there's no stroke, and draw a rectangle on the stage. Grab the selection tool and select the new rectangle. And in the properties panel, give it an X location of 25, a Y location of zero, a width of 300, and a height of 400. All right, with that rectangle still selected, hit F8. This will bring up to the Convert to Symbol dialog box. Give it a name of holder, make sure it's a movie clip, and the registration's in the top left. Click OK, and in the Properties panel, you'll notice that the information has changed. Let's give this an instance name of holder. This is where our images will be displayed. Now we need to make a box to hold the description and the picture count. So grab the rectangle tool, give it a different color, and draw one on stage. Grab the selection tool and select that rectangle. Go into the properties panel and give it an X value of 25, a Y value of 400, make the width 300, and give the height 40. Again, with it selected, hit F8. Now the dialog box will pop up again, and your settings should still be the same. So just give it a name of content. Also, be sure to give it an instance name of content as well. Now I'm gonna take a minute to make it look a little bit better. So feel free to spice it up. All right, go inside the content movie clip and call layer one BG and lock it. Make a new layer and call it text. Grab the text tool and change it to dynamic text. Draw a small rectangle text box to the left hand side. Grab the selection tool and position it over the background and give it an instance name of pick num text. Grab the type tool again and do the same thing. Only make it a bit bigger and give it a name of disk tag. And that should be it for the setup. Now go back to the root timeline, go to the actions layer, and open up the actions panel. All right, back in the actions panel, we need to put the XML data into an array. So go all the way to the top of the script and hit enter a couple of times. At the top, let's set up a couple of arrays that will hold the pictures and descriptions. So we're gonna type var pick array, data type that to array, equal it to a new array. And on the next line, type in var disk array, data type that to array, equal it to a new array. On the next line, type var pick length and data type that to an integer. All right, go inside the load the XML function. I will comment out the trace statement and make a line below that. We need to set a variable to give us the length of the XML document. So type pick length equals XML data dot photo list dot photo dot length. And on the next line, trace the pick length. And you should get seven. That is how many photo nodes are in our XML document. So close the window and go back to load the XML function. Delete the pick length trace statement and let's begin our for loop. For right now, let's just trust that it works. I will explain what a loop is in another tutorial. So let's type for open parenthesis var i or data type in that to integer and equaling zero. Semicolon i is less than pick length semicolon and then I plus plus close parenthesis. Don't forget your open and close curly brackets. All right, inside the for loop, we need to take our data and push it into the arrays. So let's start with pick array dot push XML data because that's where all the XML information is stored dot photo list dot photo dot at path open square bracket I close square bracket close parenthesis. Okay, for a brief explanation of a for loop, it's a very simple concept to understand. First, I am setting up a variable and setting the initial value to zero. 
as long as i is less than pick.length, then add one to i. So the first time it runs the loop, it starts at zero, and then it runs the code inside. Then it goes back to the top and see if i is still less than pick length. It is, so it runs the code again, and now i is equal to one. And then it continues this process until the statement i is less than pick length is no longer true. And the reason why I put pick array dot push function in here is because I want the array to be filled with all of the information in the XML. So trace the pick array outside the loop and you will see that the paths are now in the array. Now let's do the same thing with the disk array. Inside the loop, type disk array dot push, open parenthesis, XML data dot photo list dot photo dot at disk open square bracket i close square bracket close parenthesis and trace the disk array outside the loop again and you'll see all the information is in there now we are ready to set up the code to load the image into the holder so let's go back to the top and set up two more variables one is the loader object so under the last array type var image loader and data type it to loader and the other one is to hold the current picture number I like to call it who is on. So type in the next line var who is on and data type that to an integer and set the initial value to zero. Back in the load the XML function underneath the for loop type image loader equals new loader. This is to set up the loader object. On the next line we need to set up a URL request. This is so the loader has something to load. So on the next line type in var main rec data type that to URL request and set that to a new URL request and inside the parentheses set pick array open bracket who is on close square bracket and then close parentheses and since the variable who is on is set to zero right now this will display the first image on the next line let's load the request into the loader so type image loader dot load open parentheses main rec close parentheses now we need to set up event listeners, one to load it in and one to tell us if there's an error or something's wrong. So on the next line, type image loader dot content loader info dot add event listener open parenthesis event dot complete comma image loaded close parenthesis. And on the next line, type image loader dot content loader info dot add event listener open parenthesis io error event dot io error comma image problem close parenthesis now go outside that function and let's start to set up the two functions we just created first let's type function image loaded open parenthesis evt colon event close parenthesis colon void open and close curly bracket and inside that function, simply add the image loader to the holder movie clip like this. Type holder dot add child open parenthesis image loader close parenthesis. Now let's set up the error function. So type function image problem open parenthesis evt colon io error event close parenthesis colon void open and close curly brackets. And inside, simply type a trace statement that says the image isn't here, colon, close quote, plus evt.txt, close parenthesis. Now's a good time to test the movie and see if it's working. Sweet, it's working so far, so good.